All right, today we are going to be going over fighter cards and how to read them and what everything means, where to find everything, whatever. So this is a fighter card. This is Alice. We're using her as an example. And um, so the fighter is going to go on your field in your fighter zone. It is placed there at the beginning of the game and does not get removed. It cannot be flipped face down. It cannot be removed from the field in any way. And yeah that's that's pretty much that so now how to read a fighter card you have the name text this is just their name and it only ever really applies if another card declares the name for example you have right down here um when you set this board card kim avery it's another card's name game plus high strength so the name only matters for that then to the right of that you have this number in this box this is 2000 and that would be the fighter's life their health pool whatever you want to call it this is how your character stays alive and when that number reaches zero you are you you die you lose so this is pretty much the most important thing to be keeping on top of the whole game and that is how you calculate any damage you are taking is subtracted and anything you gain in life is added through here to the right of that in this circle uh is 150 for alice and that is the combat power now, combat power is calculated generally by adding up all of their attributes together, and that becomes their overall power ranking. This is the number that is typically referenced with action cards um, for your basic um, outgoing damage. So, nameplate, life, combat power, okay? You have the character artwork in the middle, which doesn't apply to really anything for fighter cards it's just who the character is and then you have in this left side box you have card effects so pretty much every fighter is going to have a passive or at least a couple of passive abilities the passive abilities are in effect while they're on the field um and every and applies based on conditions stated some cards like support cards will have um, passive effects that are only able to be active on the field if they're face up so some support cards or any, any support card can get flipped face down meaning that none of their effects are active but a fighter can't get flipped face down so these these effects are always active as long as they don't get negated by a different card effect so for alice for example at the end of each turn yours and your opponents if this card took damage any any means of damage you gain one strength now based on how effects typically work you go by exactly what the card text states so if it says something it does that if it doesn't say something then that doesn't apply so this says at the end of each turn if this card took damage gain plus one strength it does not say if this uh, for each damage this card took so if you got attacked twice you're not gaining two strength it's just if this card took damage at the end of each turn gain one strength so overall flat plus one strength if you were attacked and took damage now this is another effect which is typically separated on a new line um, with a hyphen there while your stamina is higher than your opponent's stamina over here the first action card you activate per turn has their maximum cooldown reduced by one turn and again once we get to action cards there will be another video for you to check out in the playlist that this video is in to learn all about each individual card type and how they work um, and then you have over here another one. This is how names are involved when you set. Set is just a card going on the field. Um, if you play Yu-Gi-Oh, then you know set to be face down, but that doesn't apply here. The term set is just placing it on the field. It goes on the field. Um, when you set the support card, Kim Avery, gain plus five strength once. So if, if Kim gets returned to your hand somehow and you place her again, you don't gain another five strength. But it also doesn't say that you only gain the strength while she's on the field. It's just when you set her. So that plus five is a flat bonus to your strength stat. Now, a lot of characters will have their passive abilities and then an activate ability have some kind of effect right here that typically you choose to activate. Alice's is a little bit unique, and I'll show you an example in a second, but she has Claw Transference. And the conditions of this are if your opponent activates a counter in evade type counter card in response to your attack, uh, base attack or action then you inflict 25 damage after initial damage calculation so for example if i'm if i am attacking my opponent with a physical attack and they evade counter then 
your attack, whatever is missing or mitigating damage or whatever have you. And after that damage calculation goes through, you then inflict additional 25 damage. Now, this is in reference to the character claw transference and basically is a reference to if she misses the attack, then it goes in the wall and then her claws pop out somewhere else and still do some damage. Now, we're not going to go over every single fighter in this video. Obviously, they all have different effects. They all do different things, but we are going to show another example of Destro. Um, as you can see, Destro has 1650 um, life and 125 combat power. So he's a little bit weaker than Alice, but um, he's still within the realm of being a viable opponent because they're within like three to 500 life of each other. So they are still paired combatants. But if you look over here, his active uh, ability is when he chooses to activate. So once you can declare once, if you declare a strength base attack, you can make that base attack CP plus strength. So you get a free... Um, basically cp 125 plus strength 25 so you'd be getting a free 150 output of attack now to go over here we have character specifiers whatever you want to call it specificities and whatever you have their species and she is demon and then what class she is tuffle because there will be like divine there will be species human class like like non applicable or class host to a tuffle and those only apply if another card states otherwise this is just flavor text but if another card says equip this to a human host card then you can but if like you have a character like Joey who is human and he doesn't have a host class cuz he's not a host to a tuffle then it wouldn't apply to him so and then you have down here the attributes or stats i believe i reference it as stats in the game but it, they're attributes or whatever so you have strength defense power stamina mind like i said all these add up to equal your character's total cp but that doesn't mean that if these increase that your cp goes up no your cp stays as it is unless it gets increased by other means but it's just a general rule that how i determine the cp is by their stat just distribution added together so strength and power are basically what you're calculating when it comes to attacks with action cards so your strength is like physical power is magic attacks and your defense um, can be used to mitigate damage if another card says so. So, for reference, if, you act, if you're being attacked and you activate a counter block, then the block will usually say mitigate incoming damage by your defense. So, if you're being attacked for 100, and, or if you're being attacked for 150, and then you activate a counter block that uses your defense to mitigate damage, then you're getting attacked for 150 minus 28 or whatever your defense is at the time. So it is smart to use cards in your deck that do increase your uh, different stats and attributes to lower some damage and to give you more damage output. Um, <clears throat> now, stamina in regards to defense is the same thing. So if you activate a counter evade, typically evade will use stamina to mitigate damage. And then you have mind, which a lot of times is just a stat to uh, determine, uh, again, it only really comes into play when another card says so, and typically that is bound to power uh, magic type cards but it's not as prevalent as strength power stamina and defense and whatever have you and that's pretty much the basics of your fighter card that's how it interacts with the game and again on the field that goes right here in the fighter zone and it does not leave and as same thing with your opponent your opponents goes in their fighter zone except obviously it's flipped around but just uh, as a visual reference that's how fighter cards work be on the lookout for more videos and check the playlist down in the description below or at the end card where you get to see how other cards work thank you for watching and check out the card game in the link in the description below or vengeancebooks.com tcg if that url is still exists if you're watching this in like two years i don't know